I've spent the last seven days learning Godot shader language with these three goals in mind. One, to create a hit flash shader. Two, to create an animated tile background. And three, get a general understanding of how Godot shaders work. I started off by watching this video by Heartbeast. It was a really good introduction to Godot shader language. I learned a lot about the syntax of the language as well as some basic shader techniques such as changing colours of an image and creating a grayscale. I then watched this video by Abra and learned that you can use if statements inside of shaders. This led me to making this ugly mess by assigning the pixels of the texture to a certain colour based on their position. This video also covers how to create a shader that changes a texture's colour over time using sine waves. This was the end of day one, but I think it was pretty successful in learning some of the basics. I didn't have much time on day two, but I wanted to get something done, so I watched this video. The video was the most informative video I watched so far, and I wish I had watched it on day one. The video covered a few of the topics that I learned yesterday, so I didn't remake those shaders again. However, I did make a shader that swaps around the colour channels of a texture, which gives this sort of inverted effect. The video also covers creating a hit flash shader, so I made two different types which completed my first goal. I was pretty happy about this considering it was only day 2 of the challenge. On day 3 I watched the follow up video to the video that I watched yesterday. A good portion of this video was spent talking about noise textures. To summarise I learned how to generate noise textures, combine noise textures and apply a colour gradient by sampling the noise texture. From this, I was able to create all of these shaders. The video did go over some other stuff, but to be honest, I was having too much fun playing with the noise shaders to pay too much attention. On day 4, I watched this shader technique video, which taught me about some cool techniques, such as masking, distortion, erosion, and tiling. The tiling technique will be super useful later when I come to create my animated background. I should also mention that throughout these days I've also been taking a course about vectors by Brilliant, who are kindly sponsoring this video. Brilliant is a platform where you learn by doing. There are thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming and AI. It is a platform that is designed to help you learn in an effective way. Every single lesson you take will get you problem solving by letting you play with concepts, a method which is proven to be six times more effective than watching lecture videos. And what's cool is that all of their content is made by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers and professionals from places like MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, Google and more. Brilliant's problem-solving approach also helps you to build and improve your critical thinking skills. This is great because while you're learning about your chosen topics, you'll also be becoming a better thinker at the same time. I love learning and I try to learn a little bit every day and with Brilliant it really couldn't be any easier. I find the lessons fun and interactive and best of all I can take them whenever I want even if I only have a few minutes. So instead of wasting my time mindlessly scrolling through videos, I've been spending more time on Brilliant, using that time in a more productive way by actually learning. The course I'm currently taking is about vectors. Vectors are used to describe motion and orientation in space and are very important in shaders as well as game development. The course covers vector operations such as scaling, transformations, polar coordinates and the dot product. It also helps to enhance your ability to visualise and solve problems in multi-dimensional spaces. So to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash cron or alternatively you can click the top link in the description. Anyone who does use the link will also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thank you Brilliant for sponsoring this video. On day 5 I took a break from watching videos to attempt to create an animated background. The original idea I had was to create a 2x2 square texture with the colours red and blue. I could then use the Italian technique that I used yesterday to animate them moving and then just replace the red and blue to whatever colours I like. This all worked pretty well until it came to replacing the colours. I couldn't work out how to replace a specific colour with another specific colour and Google didn't give me much help either, so I decided just to leave it as it is for now. 
it wasn't the end of the world because I could still change the colors by updating the texture. However, this isn't an ideal way to do this and I want to come back and find a way to replace the colors before the end of the seven days. On day six, I attempted to create the background shader again using a different approach. I thought that maybe instead of using a texture, I could create one using the shader. The texture I'm going for is basically a checkerboard pattern. I couldn't find any Godot specific resources, so instead looked for GLSL resources as Godot's shading language is based on GLSL. I found some code and uh, borrowed it and it worked with minimal issues. I then made it so the colours could be changed and added a slider for the zoom. While doing this I also learned how to replace specific colours so I went back and edited my shader from yesterday with this new knowledge. I was pretty tired at this point so I called it a day but I was pretty happy to complete my second goal. Okay, I'll be honest, on day 7 I was feeling a bit burnt out of shaders so I just didn't do anything. So that marks the end of these 7 days. In terms of my own goals I would say this has been a success. I was able to create a hit flash shader as well as an animated background shader and I would say that I do now have a general understanding of how Godot shaders work. If you are thinking about doing something similar yourself, I would recommend the following. Start by watching some simple beginner tutorials on YouTube. Once you're comfortable, think what type of shader you actually want to make and look up related things on YouTube and Google. If you can't find any Godot specific resources, consider looking for GLSL resources as it's similar to the Godot shading language. Another place you could look is GodotShaders.com. This is a website that has a bunch of shaders made by other people. There's a decent chance that what you're looking for is on here, just remember to check the license for the code. Alright, I think that's it. Remember to check out Brilliant in the description, and if you're interested, the video that is currently on screen. Cheers.